What's going on, Dan K Show fans? Dan K, Lucas Jones, as promised, socially distanced, but back live covering USPHL hockey around the globe, around the country. We are back and better than ever, the exclusive broadcasters of USPHL hockey. Dan K, my left hand man, will be be introduced in in just one second but wait up because it's time for our three things thing number one big skrillex fans since the offseason started it's why lucas is rocking the robotron headset today actually he's just doing his job for quality control this is the guy who does it all can't wait to talk to him in a second thing number two folks don't like this is serious we're about to take the ice again in june we've got combines coming up there's going to be skates on ice. I can't wait. Stick and puck. The game of hockey's coming back, and it's why we are back and better than ever. Thing number three, back and better than ever. How about back and bigger than ever? Expansion. We're going west, young man. We're hitting the Oregon Trail, and we're heading out to the USPHL Western Expansion. The premier has gone global. It's gone national. And a man who is globally known, worldwide famous, and absolutely renowned, even though I'm unsure of what the word means. It's my left-hand man. It's my consigliere. It's mon frere from another mayor. It's Lucas Jones. Lucas, welcome back. Thanks, Dan. It's good to be back on video. Doing the podcast has been great. We're excited to continue giving that to you, but, but the video is something special. I jazzed it up with a little bit of a light show. Two things during this quarantine, Dan. I have gotten very, very much into 80s electronic music again. And number two, living next to a park has its perks. One of them is certainly not hearing a leaf blower going every single day right as you're about to record. So that's why I've got this on the light show, just an added bonus. Lucas, I've built, I've got a new villain in my life since the start of quarantine, and it's a goose. It's a Canadian goose. <laughs> and you think, as a hockey guy, me and Canadian geese would get along, but this guy, I call him Mr. Honkers, and he is out there <laughs> honking at the worst times. He's like, oh, what? 4.45 a.m.? Dan's got to get up and work from home tomorrow? Huh? No, dude. Let's just tone it back a little bit. Every once in a while, I, 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 I just tell him, hey, man, I'll get you some Timmy bits. I'll get you some Timmy H's if you just calm your Canadian goose self down. But it's not working, and we are not going to calm down either. Talking about the USPHL's Western expansion, Lucas, nine new teams coming into the fold in the premier in the USPHL Western area, both the Mountain and Western divisions within the Premier League here. Talk about that a little bit for the folks at home. It's, it's been really great to see, and it's just been one surprise after another for us here at the show, because every day we get to, it seems like every day we get to wake up to news of a new team joining the ranks, the USPHL. These new teams from the Western expansion are really going to be adding some quality to the league. And last year we talked a lot about USPHL Nation, Dan. Well, this expansion adds more states to that footprint. It's one of the largest footprints in junior hockey, and it shows no signs of slowing down. These new teams are going to be a lot of fun, especially the Pueblo Bulls, who we had a chance to talk about on episode four of the Dan K Show Presents Junior Hockey, our audio podcast found on your favorite streaming platform, as well as anchor.fm backslash DKS hyphen hockey. That is one of my favorite places to go. Let's talk about those nine teams. First, the Ogden Mustangs. This is a team out of Utah there, Lucas, and they are going to be playing Mountain Strong in Ogden. That is a tough organization. It's a tough team. They are high-flying, hard-hitting. Then we go to the Fresno Monsters, and I've watched the Fresno Monsters podcast a little bit, and I'm very disappointed, Lucas, I have not been invited on yet as a guest. I, I think that I'm a little bit upset. I'm a little bit perturbed that they didn't think to call up Dan Kane and say, hey, bring me on the Fresno Monsters podcast. Well, you know, they, they have a great setup there. I've watched some of those yeah. episodes. I've, I've listened to them, and they do a phenomenal job. And if there's one thing that I think is, is gaining a lot of ground in the USPHL, it's the media. And the media is starting to step up here, Dan. Exactly right. And that was almost our first social distancing podcast error by Dan K. I almost stomped <laughs> on your lines. I almost did the old mouth of the south on you right there and stomped on your lines. I did not. San Diego Sabres, they join it. They'll be cutting things up down there in Southern California. And the Anaheim Avalanche. And Lucas, these two teams are going to have kind of the same advantage that teams in Florida do in the recruiting game. I mean, who doesn't want to be in Southern California, in SoCal, enjoying the beautiful weather, the beautiful sunsets, and the beautiful beaches of Southern California? 
Well, I mean, I can't think of anyone who wouldn't want to be there. And I can think of two guys who would very much like to go there at some point. We like to welcome in teams to this league personally. And if the Dan K show has to go to San Diego to welcome in some new teams, uh, I mean, we got to do our jobs. Twist our arms. And guess what, Lucas? We got a place to stay. Crystal's out there. My sister, Crystal K, out there living in SoCal. She's just uh, three exits away from the San Diego Sabres. So we are we – are, 20 minutes down the road amazing we're already Classic there california style you take the one to the nine to the whatever you know they always talk <laughs> in numbers. then we go back to utah the utah outliers man there's nothing outlying about this these are a team this is a team that's going to be in every game they're going to be a tough matchup for everybody the south southern oregon spartans and they're going to be saying this is sparta but instead it's going to be oregon lucas talk about this this Utah Outliers, these South, Southern Oregon Spartans, these little off-hockey markets here that are building the game, these two teams are going to be fun to watch. Oh, a lot of fun. You know, and, and a lot of what makes these teams you know, a little bit unique and special, Dan, is their, how embedded they are in the community. You know, these teams, they do pull, they pull a lot of gate. They get a lot of spectators to come out to these events. You talk about not necessarily thinking, well, you know, junior hockey out in Oregon, but these guys are the talk of the town out there, and that's why these teams are added. It's because of the skill. It's because of everything they're able to do on the ice, but it's also because of the communities that they're a part of. The team supports the community, and the community supports the team. Then we go to the Las Vegas Thunderbirds, and again, twist my arm. Make me go there. Fine. Fine, I'll go visit the Las Vegas Thunderbirds. What what are we going to do with ourselves, Lucas, in Vegas? I mean, as as long as it's not 115 degrees, I'll, you can find me in Las Vegas for some <laughs> hockey, Dan. I, it seems like the perfect town to talk about hockey. Obviously, the Golden Knights have been extremely successful since the expansion in Vegas. And, and I think if there's one thing that Vegas is now inserting itself well in, it's making that transition, Dan, over from just a, a casino town into a real sports-heavy town as well. And you look at the Las Vegas Thunderbirds, they practice, I mean, they play in the practice facility of the NHL's Vegas Golden Knights. And, and you want to talk about the importance of that. I've seen the importance of playing in an NHL team's practice facility firsthand, whether it's the Powell Islanders up there working with the New York Islanders or it was the Philadelphia Flyers where I got my start out in Voorhees, New Jersey, in the training facility of the Philadelphia Flyers. And the, the amount of times I got to see the likes of Ryan Badger or Trevor Gooch hit the ice taking on NHL netminders, taking on NHL skaters. And, you know, watching Wayne Simmons match up with Ryan Badger of the Flyers junior hockey team just to get some extra skate time in, there's, there's nothing like being in the same building as an NHL team. That'll be exciting to see. The final two teams, Lucas, this might be the Rocky Mountain Oyster battle here. The Northern Colorado Eagles take on the Pueblo Bulls. Those are the last two teams to join the ranks. The Pueblo Bulls were the final one of the nine to make the move. This is a team that sells out their arena every night, puts a live bull on the ice to get you there. And we have already talked to owner Jerry Wilhite and his son, head coach Chris Wilhite, about a potential trip out to Pueblo. Yeah, I think that would be a lot of fun. You know, it's, it's an area that I know we have a number of contacts out there, some old friends of ours, and it's a great area. Both, both teams are in phenomenal areas of the state. Colorado itself is such an up-and-coming area, if it's not already established in many parts of the state. And, and the hockey that these two teams are putting out in the ice, just the product is incredible. They've got developmental systems in place. They've got excellent training regimens. They're, they're top-notch teams added to a top-notch USPHL region. Speaking of top-notch USPHL hockey, it's time to talk Combine. We're going to talk with Justin Quenville of the Metro Jets about the upcoming USPHL Combine out there in Michigan. Justin Quenville, head coach of the Metro Jets, joins Dan Kane and Lucas Jones next. All right, hockey fans, welcome back. As promised, it's time to get into Combine season. I cannot explain to everyone at home, how excited I am to finally get skates back on the ice, drop the puck, play a little hockey, and start getting things back to normalcy. And one place where this normalcy is going to start yet again is Frazier, Michigan, for the Detroit Combine. That's going to be taking place June 25th and 26, 2020. This is an exciting event, an awesome event, and with us to talk a little bit about that event today is head coach of the Metro Jets and one of the best, I've said this before on the broadcast, one of the best interviewees of all time, Coach Justin Quenville. Coach, how's it going? 
Good. Thanks for having me. And uh, no pressure, I guess, right? <laughs> That's it. No, no pressure at all. I mean, we always like to put people in. Like, uh, when, when we get a good interview, there's nothing better, right? And this is going to be a good one today because we're talking about the opportunity to get back on the ice and get seen by, in our, in our opinion, the best hockey minds in the country, in the world. It's going to be the Detroit Combine. Can you tell us a little bit about if I'm a player at home right now in quarantine, how can I get signed up to participate in the Detroit Combine? Thanks. Uh, basically, it's it's a pretty simple process. Just go online to the league website at www.usphl.com. There'll be a registry. Very simple. I know the cost is, is is fairly low, which was one of the you know big targets that we wanted was to to make a point that we're not trying to make this a, an incentive based event or a fundraiser, but more or less an opportunity to to get better exposure at a tier two level that we feel like kids need to be you know. Uh, educated on a little bit more out here so for us it's exciting time but you know looking at the website itself everything should be uh, visible for them right there now we we talk about this combine experience what I was talking about I mean I try my best to stay in shape during this whole thing but there are some times where you get yourself you, you can get a little stagnant throughout quarantine a lot of these guys are going to have a little bit of cement in the shoes right now there hasn't been a lot of ice time available around the country if any at all now how what is a player going to be in for when they show up at the combine on June 25th? What kind of workouts will they see? What kind of work will they be doing and what can they expect on a day to day basis? I mean, it'll be similar to your typical tryout based event at the junior level. Um, obviously we're going to have games for the guys. Uh, we'll build in a little structure so that it's not just come in, come out and you're done. I mean, we're going to want to get some face time with them. Uh, we're also going to take into consideration given the, the time that we're, we're going through right now that, that kids have not had the proper opportunity to, you know, to get to a point where they feel like they're a hundred percent for a combine. Uh, but the benchmark is set for everyone, but more or less just a tryout format with some games uh, over the course of two days. So it's not too taxing on them. And obviously we'll take everything into consideration to make sure that they're uh, safe and healthy. Now, you know, talk about these, these combines and, and yours in particular, why, well, I should say, what sets these combines apart? Because, you know, a, a lot of times, especially around this time of year, there are so many opportunities for these players to sign up and go to a similar event. But what sets this combine apart from others? Well, I think for, for us in particular in, in the Midwest region was, was, like I touched on earlier, was to educate people of the opportunities that are, that are out there. Uh, beyond what they know that's in front of them here. Um, you know, the NCDC has done a very good job of providing opportunities for the collegiate level uh, and, and been a great uh, model for, for the USPHL Premier in particular and for us with the Jets uh, to be able to, to help expose our players to not just a higher tier, but to, to uh, other opportunities out east. So for the, the combine itself, I think it's important that, you know, kids take this as just another means of exposure uh, to another demographic uh, that's that's obviously made a big name for itself out east for such a long time, but with the goal in mind to see more players out here get the same opportunities that kids from all over the country, but mainly from out east, have been receiving from the NCDC level. Now, Coach, I think you've seen it firsthand in the likes of Anthony Sonato, the the success that can come from the model right now in the USPHL and NCDC, Anthony Sonato moving with a, a tender from the Twin City Thunder and, and a guy who has gone up and played. You've had some guys play for multiple teams in the NCDC over the years. Can you talk about why, why a player should choose the USPHL, why, why the model works well for player development and getting guys moved up through the ranks? Well, I think, one thing that the league as a whole does really well is is maintain communication between each other in terms of needs. You know, what, what is it that, you know, certain teams want um, at the, at the USPHL premier level, and then obviously the needs at the NCDC level, what they're looking for. I mean, as, as the season progresses, you could see players are, are hungry for opportunities. And one thing the NCDC has done well for us is like I said, is maintain communication uh, with our program in particular, but with several other programs and, uh, finding the right dates to bring kids in and obviously the ones that feel like uh, are ready at the time but sometimes it's just for for just a showing right they want to get a look at a kid firsthand and bring him in and actually play him in games so uh, there's a lot of uh, processes processes that are in place 
uh, for, for the USPHL Premier in particular, uh, that gives a lot of looks, but also a lot of opportunities for players uh, to get some actual ice time and some visibility with the NCDC. So for us, it's been mainly just that that cohesiveness between the two leagues that's helped us uh, provide a lot of opportunities. And obviously, with with the affiliation process as well, it not only guarantees uh, immediate uh, look from a certain organization, but other organizations are also willing to take in some players, which is something that we've taken advantage of uh, in particular, which is not just pigeonhole ourselves with one team, but to really blanket as many uh, organizations as we can to get our guys up there. And you guys do it better than ever out there in Metro. I mean, the Metro Jets organization, the development program over the last two years that you guys have taken a hold of. I mean, the work that, that you guys do top to bottom in that organization, watching you all on the road, the professionalism behind it, the, the way that it's a high character player that comes out of your organization coach. And it's something that we always look at. And, and that's always where we see the success at this level is what, what does the guy look like that's coming out of your organization when it's all said and done? And that's something you guys do so well. So I'll come to you here on this question. It, it, and we talked about it before we jumped on and I've already mentioned the quarantine can build stagnancy. You're going to have a whole group of guys coming into your organization at the end of this summer to start up a new season. What are you telling them to stay in shape? And, and how can these guys preparing for a combine get ready for a combine for potentially without ice time? I mean, absolutely difficult for everyone right now. But uh, given the, the, the days that we're dealing with right now, I think kids have enough uh, options and enough material at their disposal online that they can obviously do some homework and, and find some workouts to be able to, to stay in the best of shape that they can. But as everyone knows, hockey's not like other sports. I mean, we don't have the means to recreate uh, ice or skating specifically. So uh, that's going to be something that's going to be taken into consideration. And in our program in particular, we're fortunate to have a, a full-time strength and conditioning coach who's got a hockey background, a play professional, and coaches with our program, and Jamie Lovell. And he's done all the research and taken in everything that he can so that we can communicate with our prospective players and our returning players about a program that's going to be best for them so that they do come into, you know, skating or to a combine or to anything within a few weeks where they're not going to risk you know, getting injured or pulling any muscles and whatnot. So I think if kids, you know, continue to do a good job educating themselves and, and, and taking that need to find more information online, they'll be able to do it. Uh, but in the end, I think everyone's going to do what they can to make sure they can ease the players in so that that way they don't, they don't just go out there and you know, get hurt right away. Yeah, and, and Coach, while we've, while we've got you, you know, I don't think we can let you leave without talking about the Metro Jets specifically because, I mean, this is a team that has just been – has an incredible lineage and, and, and really done a phenomenal job in the last two years in the USPHL, you know, not just in terms of the end of season success, not just in terms of the regular season, but also what you talked about in that affiliate program and moving players up to the NCDC to get some looks and getting players to the next level. Talk about the Metro Jets program and to any uh, prospective players out there, why they should look at and potentially choose the Metro Jets. Well, I appreciate you asking me, and I think the easiest answer to that is, is, is you know, our, our ownership. I mean, Pete Kamek is, is a guy who not only is very passionate about uh, wanting to help these uh, student athletes and, and finding opportunities beyond just junior hockey, but he allows us, um, the coaches, the management, and everyone involved in the organization to be able to input their, 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 their two cents, their, their, their knowledge, their experience, and what we feel like is best for each kid. And I know every program has a, has a different perspective on how to develop players and how to advance them, but we really feel that we're a selfish program in a sense that we, we try to really focus in on each player's individual goal because that could change. Everyone's development curve, everyone's lineage of opportunity could be different, whether it be at the college level or advancing throughout the season uh, to the Tier 2 model in the NCDC. So we try to take in those segments and break them in as the season progresses and, you know, truly just try to get players to find a way to buy into that model. And, you know, when we say develop, we really do focus in on that. We try to you know, build a program that's specific to the players that obviously doesn't, um, you know, conduce negatively to our team, but overall we put product on the ice that we want scouts to be able to, to look at and see, wow, that's a kid that's ready, ready to make the jump. Um, so we touch on all those facets, whether it's on ice, off ice, training, hockey IQ, video, we try to incorporate all those things in a way where it's organized so that these players come in and they realize now I'm learning to become a hockey player and I'm not just playing hockey. So for us, it's a lot of fun. Uh, we're fortunate that we have a facility that, you know, could provide all those 
those elements for kids to do everything they can to get better. And if we find players that, you know, commit to that, then they'll find a lot of success with us. Well, thank you, Coach, for joining us. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to find out more about the Detroit Combine, you go to usphl.com. You can sign up there. You can be one of the 200 max entrants to get in. So get in, get on the usphl.com and get signed up for that. It's going to be an incredible, incredible event with some of the best minds in hockey. If you want to find out more about the Metro Jets, go to metrojetshockey.com. You can find out more about the organization there and some of the incredible work that Coach Buenville and the rest of the guys out in Metro are doing. It's an incredible organization. This is going to be a wonderful event, and we're just so happy to see hockey back. Of course, we ask everyone to be safe, continue to keep your social distance, and COVID-19 will be taken into account throughout this entire combine. I, I know there's a lot of minds at work right now making sure this is going to be done not just the right way, not just the best way for the players, but the safest way possible. Coach Blendel, thank you so much for joining us today on the Dan K Show. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys, and continue the great work. You are watching the Dan K Show. Everything USPHL, from the NCDC to the Premier and Elite Leagues. The Dan K Show with Dan K and Lucas Jones. Dan K, Lucas Jones, the Dan K Show here with an absolute Dan K Show favorite, John Schwartz, a man, a myth, and a legend, a guy that I've had a lot of pizza arguments with. Chicago v. New Jersey. We have talked about folding it with one hand or eating it with fork and knife. Today, we talk hockey. We talk the USPHL Chicago Combine. Mr. Schwarz, how are you doing today? Well, I'm having a great day to start out today because I get to talk to you guys. And, uh, you know, the last five or six years being in this league, I can never thank you for the memories you've created, all the kids that uh, of the different teams I've owned and stuff. So, um, I don't know if you're prepared for me to start out uh, talking so great about you guys, but uh, I know you guys like humble pie, but uh, I'm a huge fan of you guys. And uh, anytime I can uh, participate um, doing something with you guys, I'm all in. Hey, and we are huge fans of you as well. Just to watch the work that that you, your team, your family does. It's a family experience with the Shores family when we come out there to the Midwest to watch you guys what you do championing the game of hockey, helping out players throughout the world to find their right fit, their right home, and their next step in their junior hockey career is some great work. And now you're getting into that work with the Chicago Combine. This is a great event, an incredible event coming up. Can you tell the folks home a little bit about the USPHL Chicago Combine coming up in June? Right. So in the Midwest, we have so many great owners and coaches out over here. Um, and we've grown to adding the Great Lakes Division. So I think we have like 23 teams. Um, all these uh, organizations love getting together and helping together um, in a very unselfish manner, kids. And we, we also try and keep the cost down as, as little as possible to try and run some um, events that give kids the opportunity to further their hockey journey. So last year was our first in Denver, endeavor in uh, Chicago running the, the first Chicago Combine, and the ex success that we've uh, enjoyed from that one, we decided, hey, we need to do this annually. Um, we tried to do this in April because of the environment and with the virus going around. That didn't happen, and now uh, monitoring each of the states, we have uh, found a very safe environment and a safe date for the players in a, basically it's a southern suburb of Chicago, but it is Indiana. So Chicago's on the border of Indiana, Illinois. So 50 minutes south of uh, Chicago, we're going to be doing this in Dyer, Indiana, which is home of one of the USPHL teams. And um, in the middle of June, we're going to get the kids that are all jonesing to get back on the ice to uh, have that opportunity to be seen in front of uh, uh, different scouts and teams and uh, take a look at uh, being able to uh, make choices for their junior career for this, this fall coming up. And now we look at the combines that the USPHL puts together, the speaking arrangements, the 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 hockey, the well-known hockey folks that come into town, the the GMs, the coaches from the from everywhere around the country. Can you talk a little bit about who specifically are these players going to be trying out for, getting a chance to skate in front of? What are some of the the big names, some of the big factors in in the player's career here that are coming up at this combine? Yeah, that, that's a good one. So, you know, we have our NCDC uh, model, which is a non-pay-to-play. Those teams will be coming out here. 
Um, we will have guest speakers from NCA level, a ACHA level coming out here. And then we have our premier and elite levels of junior hockey, which contain about 65 teams that uh, most of the teams will participate over here looking for that talent um, to come join their team this year. Um, it's interesting just to see our, our, our USPHL premier level grow. We just added the WSHL, and I think that puts us over 65 teams. Um, and we, we span all the way from like California to Florida, all the way up to, uh, you know, the Massachusetts, uh, even north of there. So we just keep growing each year. And I noticed I was looking at one of the things, um, the footprint of uh, one of the competitors is, is down to, uh, I think it's either 29 or 30 teams. And uh, I didn't realize we, we have twice as many teams as, as our competitors. So uh, it's, it's interesting that a lot of great organizations and owners are putting their money into the USPHL and deciding that's a great decision for them based upon our model and how we do it. So uh, it's uh, fabulous that we started out four years ago and it's been a great ride so far. So I, I commend the USPHL executive committee and guys like you and Lucas that uh, are, are, are bringing so much value to us. So uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to this event too. Oh, and we look at it and it's events like this. It's the showcases throughout the season. One that you put on there in Chicago and you host and I always see you and the boys and, and your daughter and, and your everybody in the Shores family putting in the work throughout that weekend. That is an incredible weekend when you guys bring in teams from around the country. And it's it's these events that the USPHL put on and, and folks like yourself put on that take the league to that next level. And, and I think you talk about the growth of the league. It, it allows teams with different playing styles to be seen throughout the entire country. Scouts from around the entire U.S. get a chance to get out and see these guys. Now, you obviously, in the Midwest, you have you have a big role there, right? You you're work with a lot of teams, work with a lot of coaches, and you, you own some squads as well. Can you talk a little bit about the competition in the USPHL Midwest and what you're expecting out of that Midwest region this year? Yeah. It was uh, it was a shame in March that you know when we got down to nationals and we had that that final twelve teams and and seeing how the Midwest uh, competes against them, um, we get to see it to showcase little bits and pieces. Now we're talking about the best of the best divisions going at it, and it was so abruptly um, um, stopped. Otherwise, I, I thought there's some teams in the Midwest that really had a chance to to win it all and. Uh, you know, not taking anything away from anybody else because there's some great organizations out east and the south, just very solid. And uh, it was uh, it was going to be a good chance for us to to really shine and 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 maybe win it all, um, a team from the Midwest. But um, that didn't happen. So now we're going to have to uh, take a look in the in the fall and uh, and 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 see what happens here for the, the the season, what we can do. But I think the Midwest has migrated and done very well. Um, every time we have a showcase, they they've proven the to win a bunch of games too. And uh, so it's exciting to see, um, you know, the, our style of hockey, how it adapts to uh, the Southern style and the Eastern style. So that's fun to watch always. And now it's going to be the Western style as well. And the mountain West, you're going to get a chance to see what we couldn't wait for. We talked to the, the Pueblo bulls on our audio podcast. We're doing weekly here. One of the new joinees of the USPHL's premier division. And, and we talked about, we can't wait to see the Pueblo bulls. They were talking about their playing style. Sound a little similar to a friend of yours and Marty quarters in this Wisconsin Rapids river Kings up there. We can't wait to see those two sides take the ice against each other. A little bit of that, that skill meets physicality, that Midwest style. It's one of a kind. It's got to be exciting right now as somebody so involved in the in the Midwest division, just to to see your organizations, your players get a chance to showcase themselves nationwide on this level. You, you hit it on the head, Dan. I mean, a couple of years ago, we uh, took a leap of faith and, and we joined. And then all of a sudden um, you see teams like uh, Metro Jets and Pittsburgh Vengeance and and Toledo Cherokee and all those from the NA3HL deciding that they want to make the leap to us. And then you see. A uh, WSHL, which it wasn't a broken league or anything. It was a great league with a, a, bunch of, a bunch of great organizations. And why I know there's such great organizations? Because the fans show up. Like, you can't put a product on the ice and, and uh, lie to the fans. Um, when they show up with thousands to the game, you're definitely doing something right. And the product you put on the ice is something people are going to put their money uh, behind and buy those tickets. So um, to have them join us, 
uh, with the Great Lakes. It's just this this growth and and the um, um, the competition and the level of play just grows each year. And that shows with all the commitments that that we get each year into college from uh, from the USPHL ranks of the NCDC Premier and Elite. Now. John, you have such a big role in this USPHL framework, especially out there in the Midwest. Can you talk to the person looking at this combine schedule coming up, looking at hockey finally getting back underway, things starting to open back up, life starting to, starting to slowly normalize here as we get through this, this COVID-19. Can you, can you talk to the person at home, the parent, the player, why come out to Chicago? Why come to the USPHL Chicago Combine? And why play in the USPHL? Sure. I just, uh, the USPHL gives you this model that gives you a chance to compete at such a high level and further your career by going to college and playing um, on a college team, if you if you choose to do that, and be seen. Um, you know, having a, a kid in Chicago, there's so many schools, and being able to go play games out in the East and go to those showcases and be seen, um, it, it, it just... You're, you're seen by so many different eyes and so many different coaches. And for a parent, rather than playing for your local organization and not being seen, here's your chance to get the best value possible. I know the way we run our teams in the Midwest, you know, by the time we bust the kids and fly the kids and get them hotels and food on the road and everything, our value and, and the amount of time on the ice during the year, um, I know we're 200 hours on the ice. Um, we also do extensive workouts and stuff. And that's how the model of most of the Midwest teams are. That value for the kid is probably something they haven't seen, um, you know, when they were younger and stuff and, and starting out. That just gives them this great uh, opportunity to blossom and become great student athletes uh, for the following year. So, um, you know, I, I just think uh, most parents are are letting their kids play juniors versus 10 years ago because we see so many teams out there because of that value and stuff and the opportunity to save money is in college. So it's a good investment. And John, we thank you so much for joining us today, talking about the Chicago Combine. That's coming up June 13th and 14th, 2020. It is called the Chicago Combine. It's going to be hosted just down south in Dyer, Indiana. A nice 45-minute drive from O'Hare Airport. Registration, $79. Get to usphl.com and sign up right now for your chance to be seen by some of the best teams, some of the best coaches, and the best league in all of junior hockey. I tell you, folks, as we close out here, people ask us throughout quarantine and, and even before that about where should I go? Where should I play? And I always tell them that the first thing is know the people you're playing for. Know the people that are, are working in your corner when you go to these organizations. And, John, you are at the very tippy top of the mountain when you want to talk about guys who care about the player. It is such, a, such an honor to work with you year in and year out. We can't wait for another season working with you. Thank you, guys. I can't wait to see you guys. Um, I have a bunch of pizzas lined up for you guys, beef sandwiches, <laughs> um, whatever you feel like, but I'm ready to make you guys uh, 300 pounds if you want. So come on out. In, one, I, in five days, I can do that. I can't wait. They usually got to roll me out of the ring. So when I'm done going out to Chicago with you, you're always, you are the number one in hospitality. Thank you to John Schwartz working with the USPHL Midwest and absolutely putting on the event of the year, the Chicago Combine coming up. Get out to it and go to usphl.com to find out more. All right, folks, welcome back to the first empty net of the offseason. And we have had such a fun time today. Coach, Coach Justin Quendell of the Metro Jets joined us to talk about the USPHL's Detroit Combine. The best in the biz, John Schwartz, joined us to talk about the Chicago Combine coming up, both in June, both events. We are so excited to just have hockey back on the ice. Lucas, this quarantine in Jersey is still going strong. We are still at home. We are still socially distanced. Can you talk to me a little bit about, I know each week I think we can do this. What's something, what's Lucas's quarantine finding of the week? What have you found out about yourself or maybe a new hobby or a new skill that you never thought you had? Well, what I found out about myself this week is that uh, I'm out of shape. Uh, and I, found, I, I think uh, seven months of chicken wings um, and 10 cups of coffee a day, as it turns out, might not be good for the body, Dan. Um, I went back to my, my summer workouts from last year, um, some kettlebell workouts, a lot of strength and flexibility stuff. 
and I am gassed. <laughs> I was done after about 11 minutes into that workout. So this quarantine uh, will be about getting back into pre-hockey season shape from last year. I would say my finding about me is, I mean, certainly out of shape. I mean, I, I will second that. I mean, we don't have the gym open here. And it's more disappointing when the gym is closed in my apartment complex because I can't do what I would normally do, which was eat my body weight in chicken wings over a weekend and go, man, I'm totally going to hit that gym Monday and then not do it anyway. But at least not <laughs> on Sunday night as I went to bed, that was always a great thought to have in my head. Mm -hmm. Made me feel a little bit better. Um, but I would say – my finding is that I make a pretty mean pizza. I Before this quarantine, I never had the time in my life to think, let's make some pizza dough. Let's throw some pizza together. Let's, let's do this thing. And you know what, Lucas? I have a little, bit of, a little bit of cheese pizza, a little bit of Brussels sprout asparagus pizza with a little bit of hickory smoked Brussels sprout on top. Ooh, okay. One of a kind. This guy is a chef now. Chef Boy RD, Chef Boy R Dan K, more like it. And yeah, I, I think I'm just going to keep – I think cooking's now the new hobby. I think I think with all the cooking we've both been doing, you might have to get like a Dan K show chopped challenge going on. That might have to be some, I, some summer content. Cutthroat kitchen, I'd rather do. I'd rather be bidding on it. We'll we'll make a cash okay. prize that goes to the winner's charity mm -hmm. and we will bid on different sabotages and play a Dan K versus Lucas Jones Cutthroat Kitchen. I think that's a pretty good idea over the summer. I think Socially we can manage different. that. So uh, so you know, socially distance and uh <laughs> might have to rename it for uh for certain reasons, but I, uh, I like the idea, Dan, especially getting some charities involved. I, I really think it's a good idea. We'll look into that. If you want to see that at home, make sure to tweet us at the underscore Dan K show, reach out to us, Instagram and Facebook at the underscore Dan K show. If you'd like to be a part of the Dan K show, go to www.dankshow.com and let us know. If you'd like advice throughout this quarantine, maybe some assistance finding your next step. Also, feel free to reach out to us at www.dankshow.com. We are here for you, the parent and player. And speaking of that, Lucas, we have a podcast that the folks at home should be watching every Thursday as well. That's right. You can find that podcast. You can find all the episodes and all the links on anchor.fm backslash DKS hyphen hockey. Now, you can also find the podcast by searching Dan K. Show or Dan K. Show Presents on every streaming service out there. And if you have a favorite streaming service and you can't find our show, let us know on Twitter. We'll either give you the link, the direct link to the show, or we'll contact Anchor and we will get ourselves on that streaming platform. We've had a huge amount of growth so far. We've had a ton of fun talking about the guests. We weren't sure if people would enjoy us in audio form, Dan, but the results are in. The message is clear. The people want more Dan K show and we're here to give it to them. And apparently they want more Dan K show without having to look at this ugly. Man. <laughs> and again, I mean, the face for radio comes back at him again. I'll tell you, coach Quinville, by the way, I didn't bring it up in the interview. The hair was on point there mm -hmm. for quarantine. And this thing, I've made it look kind of presentable up front. I kind of look like I might sell you a new Toyota Camry, <laughs> but the back man, I'm going a little Barry Melrose and I'm hiding that right now on camera. There you go. Yeah, I think I think this is it. We're all just just now's the time to grow out your facial hair, and we shaved ours. It's back on Instagram uh, from a couple of weeks ago, and you know, just grow it. I picked a phenomenal time to grow my hair back out. Happy about that. <laughs> We'd like to thank the USPHL for all their support. We'd like to thank them for presenting this week's Dan K Show, and we'd like to tell you all how excited we are about this upcoming season. Just. Obviously, hockey was taken from us so abruptly at, at every level. The, the, the world of athletics was taken from us so abruptly. And we started to realize the importance that the game of hockey, that the game of sport plays in all of our lives and just how big of a void it leaves behind when it's not there for you. You know, it's so, it's so easy when your team's not playing well or when you have a bad game to just kind of throw the sport aside and say, I don't need it anyway. But when you see what life is like without it, it, it shows just how important the game is for these players to develop them, not just as athletes, but as men, as future leaders of this country, as future leaders in the industry. And for us to keep ourselves sane, to keep ourselves going, Lucas, I watched a re-air of an XFL game two days ago, Lucas. <laughs> I'm going into the sports. What am I doing? Uh, Dan, I'm starting, I'm starting to stream Ukrainian table tennis online. This is it. I'm in. I've got it. There was a live cornhole event on the other day. Locked. Locked <laughs> in. 
But with that in mind, I look to Lucas, my left hand man, my consigliere. I ask parting words, Lucas, for today's show. Now people really understand when you don't say anything, because I think the audio podcast for our new listeners, it's been a bit confusing. But Lucas's parting words are beautiful. My parting words for you is stay safe, stay healthy, stay distant, but stay on that grind. Keep working, keep battling. Hockey's on the way back, ladies and gentlemen. One month away, Detroit Combine, June 25th and 26th. You got that Chicago Combine coming up earlier in the month of June. Thank you to Coach Quenville. Thank you to the man, the myth, the legend, John Schwartz, for joining us on this week's Dan K Show. A lot more to come from the best in the biz. When Dan K's on the mic, it's always hockey night. How do we do these closings when we're socially distanced? I, I mean, I would imagine the same way we do it normally, just on a slight, uh, it appears to be a quarter of a second delay. It, yeah, there's a little bit of a delay, but I mean, mm. what are we going to do about that? I mean, technology. I mean, they, there was a delay on the NFL draft. Yeah, seriously. If the NFL can't figure it out, we should not be expected to. Or if we can figure it out, the NFL should figure it out. I don't know. We just do our best here at the Dan K Show, Lucas. We just do what we can. <laughs>